It is a chilly one this morning. Oh my gosh, it's been getting down into the teens. I'm actually in Walker Lake, Nevada. And there's this whole awesome lake going on right here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's still very, very cold. Uh, I was up in the Sierra and a big snowstorm came by and I was like, at first I was like, oh, I think I want to stay for the snowstorm, but I'm good for like, you know, six inches or maybe eight inches tops the most. And uh, they were saying like two to three feet of snow. <laughs> and so I was like, oh no, no, I'll get stuck, right? I, I won't be able to take my trailer out. I, even if I could get out with my car, yeah, I'd be, uh, I don't think I'd be able to tow my trailer through it. I came down here to Walker Lake, which is, you know, a couple hours away. The big snowstorm came through and all of the hills around here were all covered in snow. All the ones over there, everywhere. Now most of it's melted in just a couple days, but there's still a lot of snow up on that peak over there, which is really gorgeous. It's right there's a town of Walker Lake, and that mountain is right at the top of the town. So, and then down at the very end of the lake, I'm at the north side, and on the south side of the lake is uh, a military base, an or a U.S. Army Ordnance Base. It's a week before Thanksgiving, and tomorrow I'm heading up to go visit family and spend uh, Thanksgiving week with family, as I love to do. <laughs> I actually came through here exactly one year ago and stopped in here. And it's kind of a nice place. Walker Lake uh, has like three like beaches or kind of campgrounds. Uh, one of them is paid, that's Sportsman's Beach. And then there's Tamarack and 20 Mile Beach, which is where I'm at. There is a pit toilet here, but no other amenities, but the pit toilet is locked. Last year, the pit toilets were unlocked. And so I don't know why they've locked them this year. So I don't know if it's seasonal or if uh, this is just a thing they're doing for cost cutting or yeah, who knows. <laughs> this is free boondocking. And there's quite a few places, but you have to be careful because there's a lot of sand. And obviously there's a lot of places where people got stuck because there's these huge, huge, you know, places where they dug out to get out. If you stay on the main road area, then you won't have any issues at all. And there's actually quite a few places all along this lake. It's really nice. One of the main questions I always get is, how do you stay warm when it gets really cold? Like the lows around here are in the teens. I think last night it was like 17. Uh, I do have a Mr. Buddy heater, just the little tiny one, the Mr. Heater Buddy with the one panel. And that thing actually will heat up my tiny camper in about 15 minutes. <laughs> and so what I do is I turn it on for about 15 minutes at a time, 15, maybe 20, if it's really, really cold. And then I turn it off for anywhere from 20 to 30 to 40 minutes until, you know, the temperature drops. And then I just do that. And so one of the little green canisters of propane will usually last me about five days when it's consistently really cold and I'm using it every night. Uh, if it's really cold, then I might go through one in three or four days, but usually they'll last about anywhere from five to seven days if it's not too cold. So that's how I stay warm. Oh. So it's actually kind of chilly, but my body is warm, but my hands are cold, so. I want to show you this portable power station. Uh, this is kind of a fake unboxing because I actually took it out of the box immediately when I got it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I want to show you the box at least and the packaging it came in. A lot of people, that's important. <laughs> this is a Growatt Infinity 1500 
solar generator. If you don't know what this is, it's a battery. You fill it up with power either solar or from your car or from plugging it in uh, to an AC outlet. This is a GrowWatt Infinity 1500 solar generator. It's a 1500 because it has 1,512 watt hours is 126 amp hours at 12 volts, which is essentially what this is. So 126 amp hours, that is a lot. And it is a lithium battery, so obviously you can use all of that 1,512 watt hours. On the top, it has these two incredibly sturdy handles to carry it around. And since it is a pretty big battery, it weighs about 36 pounds, uh, which is, I think, at the top of what a portable battery would be considered. It comes with uh, three cables. It comes with an AC cable for charging it up with AC, obviously. It is a really sturdy cable, which you need because this thing will charge in under two hours from zero to 100% in just under two hours. It'll go from zero to 80% in about an hour. It also comes with a solar cable to plug it into a solar panel. MC4 is the standard connector for solar panels. And XT60 is a different plug from most other uh, portable solar generators. That's probably because this thing can take up to 800 watts of solar. That is amazing, and I'm sure the little 8 millimeter round plugs probably just don't have enough oomph to carry that much power. It also comes with a car plug to plug it into your car when you're driving. That is the slowest way to charge this back up again because your, power, your car just doesn't have that much power. Uh, but it is there in an emergency if you need it, which is really nice. So GrowWatt did send me this uh, to review, and like I said, that was kind of a fake unboxing because I have been using it for the past week, and it's been great. Mostly I was using it for my laptop. GrowWatt has actually been around for a long time, like 11 years, I think, and if you're a DIYer, if you have built your own solar system, uh, you probably recognize the name because they make a lot of components like charge controllers and all sorts of things uh, for DIYers. This is their first power station and it's a huge one. They went like all out. <laughs> so this power station does have a couple of really awesome tricks up its sleeve. Uh, first off, as I mentioned, it charges very, very fast off of AC and it can take up to 800 watts of solar. So on the left side over here is the inputs. You have the AC input, of course, and then the XT60, which you use for either solar or your car, and it's got a little reset button. So if you plug in too much solar power or you know something trips it up, it obviously will protect itself, and then you just push the reset button. On the opposite side is a 2,000 watt pure sign inverter. All four together can put out 2,000 watts. And then right below it, you have a, a DC outlet, like a car power outlet. So when you first turn it on, the display will fire up. And you can see it's a nice, bright, colorful display that really quickly lets you know how much charge it has left. Under the display here, you have six different DC outputs. You have two regular USB-A outputs, and then you have two USB-A quick charge outlets, and then you have two 60 watt outputs. The two USB-C 60 watt outlets can both be used at the same time. They both put out 60 watts. And it also has this really awesome feature of wireless charging on the top. So just drop your phone on it, and you can see it's wireless charging. I think I need a little refreshment, so I'm gonna make a little tea here real quick. Um, this is all pre-made tea. It's just chai tea. Uh, I actually really love this stuff. It's so good. And you just mix it with some milk. All right, take a little bit of tea. Mm. That is so good and simple. So one of the features that makes this an absolutely awesome power station 
for emergency backup power in your house, it's a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. And that means you can plug this in to an AC outlet and then plug something into the AC out on here. And if your power goes out, it automatically switches over to this machine. That is really awesome. So you can plug in, I don't know, your computer, uh, refrigerator, whatever, with a 2000 watt inverter. There's not a lot you can't plug into it. So another feature it has is Bluetooth connectivity. So if you download the GrowWatt app from the App Store, you can connect to it and see exactly what's going on. You first have to turn on the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. There's a little Wi-Fi button down here. You turn it on, you can see the little icons on the screen. And then you just open up the app on your phone and you pair with Bluetooth. Very, very simple. The one thing I have used this app for every day since I've got it was to see what temperature the battery is at. So it's a lithium battery, and obviously lithium batteries don't like to be used if it's under freezing or if it's above 100 degrees. So I've checked to see what temperature it was at every day before I plugged in and used it, and it'll actually discharge at below freezing, but it doesn't want to be charged up at below freezing. It has these two large fan ports right here at the top. Since I've been using it, the fans have barely come on. So here's what the fan sounds like from where I've heard it. I'm sure the fans go much higher if it gets really hot, but in my use, well, it's been quite cold here, so it doesn't really need the fan, but yeah, that's as much fan as I've gotten out of it so far. <laughs> so I wanted to make one really quick point about the AC output on this. Uh, this actually has both 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Here in North America, we use 60 hertz, 120 watt outlets. So out of the box, this defaulted to the 50 hertz. All you do is you turn the AC on and then you hold the AC button down for like, I don't know, eight or 10 seconds and it switches between the 50 and 60. So when I first got it, I switched it over to 60 hertz. In addition to a UPS making this an awesome home emergency supply, uh, the other thing is, like, the super fast charge times, like, you know, with all the hurricanes and people's power being out for a week or more at a time, or snowstorms and your power's out for, I don't know, a day or two, if you just had uh, a 2,000-watt generator, you could plug this into that, and it will charge up in two hours, and then you can turn the generator off and keep using this, so even for like a week at a time, just, you know, turn on the generator just to charge up the battery pack and then, you know, turn it off again. And that way you're using much, much less fuel, which, you know, is sky high now. You're also using your generator far, far less as well. So you're only using it for a couple hours at a time. So this lake here is really gorgeous. It's so beautiful when it's really peaceful like today, when there's no wind and you see the reflections off the water. So this is part of the Great Basin. So this lake is very salty and alkaline and briny and it has no outlet. The only way the water leaves here is by evaporation. And this lake used to be much, much higher. The water was way above where I'm sitting right now. And slowly over time, people have used all the water that came in. And so the lake level has dropped a lot in the past hundred plus years. And you can actually see along the side some remnants of where the shore used to be right up along Highway 95. Uh, but now this is all that's left. And I don't know how long this will last because not a lot of water comes in here. Most of it's taken up there for all the farms around Fallon and up there. I'm gonna put my solar panel away real quick cause I'm gonna be leaving first thing in the morning and uh, yeah, I wanna be all mostly packed up and ready to go. <laughs> Hi 
One question I've been asked several times is why I don't install solar panels on my camper. And the reason is, is because, well, my camper is really old and the roof really can't support anything on the roof. If I had bought a newer model, they made them much, much better with more sturdy frames and thicker fiberglass. Everything is better on a newer model, but they're heavier. They're about 500 pounds heavier, which would make it, well, I wouldn't be able to tow it with my Honda, let's just say that. This has its pluses and minuses, just like all RVs, but that's why I don't install, you know, on the anything on the roof. I'm trying to hurry up and get this video done because the sun goes down at 4 p.m. here. Like it goes over this ridge right over here. And yeah, that's it. And then by six, it's below freezing. One of the main things everyone asks about power stations right away is, does it have pass-through charging? Meaning, can you use it and charge it up at the same time? And the answer is yes. And if you're charging off of AC, it is true pass-through charging because it has the UPS. That means it will route power from the power outlet to the AC outlets uh, while it's charging it separately. Yeah, I mean, that's a really awesome feature, both the UPS and the pass-through charging. <laughs> I wanted to just mention one feature that I cannot test, which is you can daisy chain up to three of these together. It's outlined in the owner's manual, and you essentially just plug the AC in to the AC out of one to the other. You plug three in together, and then apparently you can go in and set two to be slaves and one to be the master. Uh, obviously, that would make this thing last three times longer. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. Uh, but obviously, I uh, don't have three to put together, so I can't test it. <laughs> so the only thing I wish that this power station had, I really wished instead of having two USB-C 60 watt outputs, that they would bump those up to 100 watt outputs. Because my laptop uses 100 watts of power and it would be so nice to just be able to plug my laptop into the 100 watt instead of using the AC inverter. Using the AC inverter you're converting the DC power in the battery to AC and then putting it into my laptop power uh, brick which converts it back to DC. <laughs> So the sun is going down quickly, and yeah, it's already cooling off. I, I'm actually getting a bit of a chill. I'm going to put my jacket back on, but it's, it's really gorgeous here. Right there is this snow-capped peak. Yeah, snow-capped peak right on the lake here. Pretty gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, three reasons I think this is a really good power station. Uh, first off, it's 1,512 watt hours, which like I said, I think I figured it was 126 amp hours. I can't really remember, but anyway, that's a lot of power. Uh, when I first got on the road, just from trial and error, I figured I needed 100 amp hours, 100 usable amp hours. And if you're using a battery that's not lithium, then half of your amp hours aren't usable. <laughs> so this is completely 100%, uh, 1,512 watt hours of usable power. Um, I looked on their website just now at the pricing and at their current price, it is 87 cents a watt hour. So it's 1,300, 87 cents. while well, the average is about a dollar a watt hour for the really big name brands. So, this is definitely in there with some of the even budget brands that don't have all the features. Uh, the other thing, the UPS, the uninterrupted power supply, is such a great feature for home emergency uses. Uh, also, the super fast charging and 800 watts of input from solar. 
Well, yeah, I don't even know anybody who has that much because they just don't have that much room on their van. <laughs> but yeah, you can totally just jack this thing up in no time at all. And as I mentioned, it weighs 36 pounds. And I think that's right at that tipping point when something is not really portable. So this is still portable. It's got those super heavy duty handles to carry it. I think anything more than that would kind of cease to be portable at that point, right? If there's a lot of bigger power stations that weigh like 50 pounds or even more. And yeah, I think this is that perfect point at where it's still portable. You can still take it camping and it just has tons of power, 1,512 watt hours. Yeah, the sun's gonna go down in just minutes. But I was just thinking about this lake. Uh, like I said, there's three places to camp along the lake and Tamarack and 20 Mile Beach, which is where I'm at, uh, are free. Uh, there's no amenities. Uh, like I said, there was a, there is a pit toilet, but it's all locked up and same at Tamarack. Uh, but down further is a place called Sportsman's Beach. And there's a campground with picnic tables and everything. I think you have to pay for that one. Although I checked the pit toilets there, they're locked. But <laughs> there was a really cool feature there. There was these signs as you drove down the hill showing where the water line was at different points in time. And so like way up at the top, it was like, you know, 1930 or something. I don't remember the exact dates, but I mean, even like halfway down, which would probably be somewhere close to where I'm standing now, probably just down a little further. It was like 1980. <laughs> like that was only 40 years ago and the water would have been way up close to where I'm at now. I mean, if you just think there's a valley at either end and how much water would have filled up those valleys too, it's an amazing amount of water that have just disappeared because like I said, most of the water that normally would come into the lake is being diverted for farming and things like that and people use. <laughs> Yeah, so this lake is just very slowly drying up. Apparently not super slowly because, yeah, like I said, 40 years ago, it would have been, I don't know, a good 40 feet higher, if not more. Yeah, kind of crazy to think about. 